Hi guys. Well, section two. We're done with one. Forget about it. It's done. Section two. Atoms, molecules, and ions. So section two is kind of like chapter two. The reason I don't name them chapters is because everyone's chapters are a little bit different. Not much. Very, very close. But just to be safe, I call, instead of chapters, I call them sections. So this is section two, atoms, molecules, and ions. Now, in this video and some of the earlier videos for section two, we're going to talk about some of the history, okay? People like Rutherford and Dalton and uh, Lavoisier and Mendeleev, and there's some other one, uh, J.J. Thompson. Some of these guys and just some of the history of the atom, discovery of the nucleus, discovery of the electron, etc. Okay, because this is all this all takes place in your chapter twos for the most part. So I want to make sure I get to it. All right. So section two, atoms, molecules, and ions. All right, let's get started. There are three fundamental chemical laws to be aware of. Number one is the law of conservation of mass. And I'm drawing a sample down here. Law of conservation of mass states that matter is neither created nor destroyed. This is credited to Lavoisier, who was around from 1743 to 1794, in case you were wondering. Uh, so I put a box around this equation. On the left-hand side, four H's, two O's. On the right-hand side, four H's, two O's. Okay, this is why we balance equations, because of the law of conservation of mass. Okay, number two, this is the law of definite proportions. All right, now I do have a trick to this, but I want to, well, the next one is going to be the law of multiple proportions. So I do have a little bit of a trick, uh, some verbiage I use to remember the difference between the law of definite proportions that we're talking about now and the next one. First things first, number two. The law of definite proportions. A given compound always contains exactly the same proportion or ratio of elements by mass. Okay. For example, why don't we consider a very popular molecule? Let's consider water. Water is H2O. Okay. In that one definite compound, there's always a ratio of two hydrogens to one oxygen by mass. So if you look up hydrogen on the periodic table, it weighs 1.01. .01. Oxygen on the periodic table weighs 16. Okay, so of that 18.02 total mass, H2O is always responsible, I'm sorry, hydrogen is always responsible for 11.2% of that mass. Oxygen's always responsible for 88.8% of that mass. I can put it much more simply, and I'm going to do it right now. It says, in other words, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen atoms in water, no matter how much the sample size, how small the sample size, how large, the ratio is always two hydrogens to one oxygen. Okay, so the ratio is always 2H to one oxygen in that one definite compound, H2O. Okay, see how I use the word definite there? There's one compound, one definite compound, all right? So that'll be helpful when we get to the third law, law of multiple proportions. All right, another name, we've heard of Lavoisier, now John Dalton. When John Dalton was on his way to discovering the atom, he stumbled into and thus discovered the next fundamental law, okay? And this is number three. This is the law of multiple proportions. As you might expect, we're gonna need multiple compounds, unlike the law of definite proportions where we were talking about one definite compound. The law of multiple proportions. It says, when two elements form, that should say form and not from, when two elements form, a series of compounds the ratios of the second element second elements 
that combine with the first element in the compound, they can be reduced to small whole number ratios. Let me read that from the top. When two elements form a series of compounds, the ratios of the second elements that combine with the first element can be reduced to small whole number ratios. Here is an example using how many compounds? Two, but let's refer to them as multiple compounds. Look at the oxygens. We're taking a look at the second element. The ratio of oxygens is two to one. So it's two oxygens on the right for every one oxygen on the left per that one carbon, okay? So I can have CO or CO2, but you would never be able to see CO and CO 1.5. Has to be a whole number integer, okay? Whole number ratio. So first bullet point, in the multiple compounds, the ratio of oxygen atoms per the one carbon is two O's to one O. So unlike the law of definite proportions, here we are considering multiple compounds and the ratio is between the same elements, just in different compounds, okay? Law of definite proportions, we had our example with two H's to one oxygen, different elements. One definite compound, different elements. Here it's the same element that you're making comparisons to. So it's two oxygens for every one oxygen in the multiple compounds. All right, so hopefully that clarifies it up a little bit. You can see how there's kind of, in your head, they can kind of flow over unless you have the, the two in front of you for comparison. All right, so we've got the uh, law of conservation of mass. We've got the law of definite proportions and the law of multiple proportions, okay? So with that, in this little bullet point here, it says, Dalton began to think that because there was always whole number multiples, there must be some simple unit, and this unit he called the atom, all right? So that led him to propose his atomic theory, and we'll get to that very, very soon in the next page, I believe. But he was, his atomic theory is it's five uh it's got five little listings five postulates there and we'll get to that but regarding the unit that i have in quotes for example this is what dalton believed he thought one cannot have co 1.5 because you cannot have 0.5 of a unit you can't have half of an atom and he's right about that and he's still right to this day okay some of his postulates that are coming up are wrong but only two of the five needs to be fixed ever so slightly, and we'll get to that. First, let's do this sample problem. So top of our new page of notes here, it says, consider three compounds that consist of only nitrogen and oxygen. We have a compound X, we're gonna have a compound Y, and a compound Z, okay? It says, compound X consists of 1.750 grams of nitrogen and one gram of oxygen. Compound Y consists of 0 0.8750 grams of nitrogen and still that one gram of oxygen. Compound Z consists of 0.4375 grams of nitrogen and you guessed it, that one gram of oxygen still. All right, our objective is to show how this data illustrates the law of multiple proportions. Well, if we want to show the law of multiple proportions, we have to show that the nitrogens are all in whole number ratios to each other, okay? So it says, well, we need to compare the ratio of nitrogen atoms by mass in the three compounds X, Y, and Z, okay? The oxygen is kind of like the placeholder. It's kind of like the C was in CO, and CO2 in our previous example. So if I do X divided by Y, 1.750 grams of nitrogen divided by 0.8750 grams, two to one. The ratio of nitrogen atoms in Y to Z is also two to one. And then the ratio of nitrogen atoms in compound X to compound Z is 1.75 grams divided by 0.4375 grams, 
4 to 1. Small whole number ratios. Okay, So all we did was write three proportions there, x over y, y over z, x over z, and we were able to prove that, yes, this illustrates the law of multiple proportions.